This episode was brought to you by ExpressVPN. Initiating moisture. When it comes to seeing movies alone, I'm not shy about it. I don't think it's that big of a deal. However, seeing Dora the Explorer alone was a whole new beast because the ticket attendant laughed at me when I told her I wanted one for Dora at 6.45. And that's never happened before. I, when, when I see a, a, a movie that skews for a younger audience, like Toy Story, there's shit there for adults to like, you know, adults go see Pixar movies. And I saw it with Tiana, but Tiana was not in town, so I was seeing Dora the Explorer alone. And uh, I guess this was very different because Dora the Explorer has no adult fans at all. Like, My Little Pony and shit used to have the fucking greasy ass, neck bearded 30 year olds and shit like that, but Dora the Explorer never quite tapped into that market. So when she laughed at me, it really hit me like, fuck, I really am going to be probably the only person there that's this old, 25 years old, and doesn't have like a kid or something with him. I'm going to be that goddamn weirdo, and I'm probably going to be sitting in a row of children that are going to be laughing at Dora jokes, and then they'll look over at me and see his fucking stoic statue of an old man. And that's exactly what happened. I sat in a row of children, and the, the jokes in Dora the Explorer didn't really make me giggle or anything, but... Did those kids have a good time? I'll tell you what. No doubt those parents told their children to eat their vegetables or else they'll end up like that 25-year-old dude that was watching Dora the Explorer alone in the movie theater. Anyway, the movie's not bad. It's, you know, it's, it's serviceable. Dora is more like Lara Croft meets Eliza Thornberry. She goes on a big old adventure. There's some CG that doesn't really work very well, but when you're a child, you're not there looking for the smoke and mirrors trying to figure out how the magician did the trick. I could clearly see kids liked it since I sat next to a whole goddamn school bus full. So it's definitely good for children. So if you have a kid or something and they're, you know, wanting to go see a movie, I guess this works. I, I'd say just go take them to John Wick 3, open their eyes early. But this, I guess, gets the job done for kids entertainment. If you're an adult, strap the fuck in because this thing gets embarrassing to sit through. Uh, Dora sings a lot of songs that are not good. Or, or like fun to listen to. She sings like a poo song. She calls it the poo song. It's, you know, we dig a hole, put the poo in the in the shit hole, and the, there goes your shit. Then you wiggle your finger to it. I don't know. It's, it's not good. And it, I felt genuinely like ashamed of myself to be sitting there by my, my lonesome. But if you're a kid, you're probably going to have a great time with the, the new Dora movie. There are moments that are like decent, like it is an adventure movie. They solve little little puzzles and stuff. Some of the characters aren't horrible. The actress that plays Dora, I think, does a great job. The actress, I, I don't remember her name. I think it's like Isabella Monaire. She does a really good job with the character. I, Dora the Explorer is a little after my time, but I would occasionally fall asleep and then wake up to the odd Dora the Explorer episode coming on the TV. So I at least am familiar with the character and the shtick. And I think she does a great job. The movie really crams every Dora reference possible in there. And uh, I guess that's great if you want to clap and go crazy when you hear your favorite line repeated. It's, I just don't have a whole lot to say. I'm just kind of, I just kind of feel a little bad about myself, to be honest. Let's just plug Dora the Explorer into the moist meter. I'm just going to give this bad boy a nice even 50%. If you're an adult, you're not going to like it. There's not a whole lot of fun to be had in here unless maybe you're fucking hammered, perhaps. If you have a child or you have like a nephew or something that you're going to the movies with, they're probably going to absolutely love it, judging by how the audience reacted to it. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen in my life, but man, it's not like Toy Story or Spongebob where there is, it's for kids, but there is a lot for adults to enjoy and appreciate as well. This doesn't have that. This is entirely 100% for children, and I guess it does well in that regard. Does anyone know what incredible online safety and blazing fast speeds with uncompromising privacy and access to the internet means in Spanish? Trick question, it means ExpressVPN, and it means the same everywhere you go. ExpressVPN is an incredibly useful tool that gives you unfiltered access to the internet while also securing your connection and encrypting your internet data, and it does all this without sacrificing on speed. With ExpressVPN, you have server locations in over 90 countries, so you'll never have to worry about missing out on Netflix shows that just aren't available in your country. Just pop that VPN on and watch anything you want. 
This is the number one VPN service rated by TechRadar and for good reason. It's easy to use, just connect with one click and it works on every main device. Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, router, the list goes on. You might be thinking this is just too good to be true. It must cost an arm and a leg just to even Google ExpressVPN. Nope, that's free. That's kind of how Google works, but also it's less than $7 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee to use ExpressVPN. So it's about as cost effective as it can get. I use ExpressVPN personally to watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia on the Irish version of Netflix, something I couldn't do on the Australian version and the process was quick and easy and awesome. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box, expressvpn.com slash moist.